Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to Too Much Tech and in today's video we are going to be reviewing the HP 27 inch Omen X 1440p 240 hertz monitor. This monitor is one of the first monitors from a big brand and with these kind of specs and obviously we want to see if this is something that's realistic to be able to run today and is it worth maybe buying just for the sake of future proofing. And at an MSRP of $649, even though I have seen it on sale below it, obviously we wanna see if it's worth the money or not. If you guys wanna check out my full unboxing video of this monitor, go ahead and look at the link in the description. I did a full unboxing and I do have some first impressions in that video as well, but of course this is gonna be my full review, so I have a lot more things to say now. I got my phone in my hand because I got some notes and I got a ton to say about this monitor. So I'm gonna give you guys a really quick spec rundown because there are a lot of specs in regards to this monitor it has a ton of stuff so we got a 27 inch panel obviously one millisecond tn panel 1440p resolution at 240 hertz with amd free sync and we've also got nvidia g-sync compatibility i don't think that this monitor is g-sync certified but it works. I did find out that this monitor is base amount compatible. It was just hidden in like one of the little foam compartments in the uh, in the box. So we found that that's really good because I was like, wow, this thing is not base amount compatible. That is really strange. So we found out that it is. The stand is height and tilt adjustable and there also is a little ambient light strip at the bottom of the monitor. Let's go ahead and talk about the build quality. So I do really like the very minimalist approach with the logos. There's not like a ton of logos or branding, just some text that says Omen on the bottom bezel and then a little logo of like HP's Omen gaming line at the bottom of the base and also on the back of the monitor. Obviously the back of the monitor I'm not overly concerned about because when are you ever going to look at it but it's there if you care. It would be cool to see this monitor if there was a white version. I would definitely be in line to buy that one for sure. It got kind of spoiled with the Alienware that lunar white looks super clean and I hope that a lot of other brands start catching on to that because it looks awesome. The feel of the material is usually pretty cold to the touch, so I, I think it's like, I don't know, metal or something like that. It feels like it, or maybe it's just really good plastic. And my only gripe about the build quality is not so much with the monitor, but just more so with the stand. So one, the uh, the way that the hinge kind of snaps in is kind of strange. I hope that obviously, you know, it's durable long term, and it does seem pretty sturdy, but just kind of the mechanism was a little bit weird, and I wasn't really used to it, so... You know, that's one thing to note. The other thing, I kind of wish that the stand did have some sort of like pivoting function because it doesn't. It just height and tilt and that's it. What's cool about the stand though is that on the back of it, there's like a dedicated spot to, you know, lay your headphones. So that's cool if you don't want to purchase a headphone stand or don't have one or don't want to put it under your desk or something like that. So that's nice that that includes it. A nice place to hide away your headset and keep it out of sight, out of mind until you need it. And I do really like the little bit of minimalist RGB strip that they have along the bottom of the monitor. I think that it looks really nice. So let's go ahead and talk about obviously the most important part of a monitor. Let's talk about the display. And the display is great. It's great for gaming. And I'll put it this way. If you have another monitor to use to watch content on or create content or just something a little bit more color accurate, good. Keep it. Don't sell it. And use this as your main gaming monitor. Use your content monitor whether it's IPS or 4K or whatever the case is, it just has better color. Obviously watch all your content and use that stuff on that because this one is not the most color accurate monitor that I've used, but because it has some really notable features like it has HDR and local dimming and stuff like that, this thing actually looks really freaking good and it makes your games pop while you're using Windows. The resolution is nice because the desktop is like perfectly scaled. So you don't really get that blurriness and the busyness looking of 1080p. It all looks perfect. And to me, 1440p is the perfect resolution for Windows. Like I said, the colors in game look fantastic. It's very bright. I think it's got like a 400 nit peak brightness, which is ridiculous for a TN panel. And because of the local dimming in game, it does help to make like some of the contrasty areas look really good. Backlight bleed on this monitor, there is a little bit, but the local dimming zones are vertical. So you'll see on a black screen when you scroll your mouse left and right, you'll see where the zones light up. So if you have local dimming, it'll obviously reduce the amount of backlight bleed that you see, but um, it is there as it is on pretty much every other LCD panel that there is. 
because it's not OLED. One thing I will say about the local dimming, I would turn it off when you're not playing games. Just because I tried editing on this monitor and it wasn't really that big of a deal. Like I said, the resolution was fine. The screen quality is pretty decent. It's not the most color accurate, but you can make it work. But what I was noticing, I was looking at some flickering and the reason why the monitor was flickering was because of the local dimming. And obviously in Premiere, there's like a lot of grays around. So the local dimming probably got a little confused debating on like, is this black? Is it going to be black? Blah, blah, blah. So the flickering went away when I turned off the local dimming. So I highly recommend that when you're not gaming, turn it off because it makes the rest of your Windows using experience better. And once again, just because the colors aren't the most accurate doesn't mean that they don't look fantastic in game because they do. This monitor is super punchy, super contrasty. The HDR really helps. I would also turn HDR like when you're just using regular windows, turn it off and turn it off in game too because you really don't need it. The monitor takes care of the work for you. So you don't really need to turn on in-game settings for HDR. It literally does all the work for you. So you don't really need the software to support that because most games HDR software is not very good. It's extremely nice and sharp with that added resolution over 1080p. And because it's 240 hertz, it's buttery freaking smooth. And in this price range, I don't really know if there's a monitor that can give this one a really good run for its money with the same exact specs. Maybe a little bit less refresh rate, similar response time and different panel technology, but in terms of the exact same caliper of monitor, there really isn't one. As far as the response time, I recommend using either level two or level three, just depending on you know the game that you're playing and what you're experiencing. Using level one, it feels way too slow. It feels like I'm using like a four or five millisecond response time monitor. Using level four, which is the fastest, I definitely start to notice you know some trailing and ghosting and whatnot. But level two and three, I didn't notice that at all, and the response time felt snappy like a real one millisecond monitor. I highly recommend that you do the same. Put it between your know, level two and three, whatever feels the best to you. I'm glad that they actually give you four different levels of customization too, so that if you don't mind the blurriness, you can have true, you know, one millisecond response time. But honestly speaking, playing on level four and level three and level two, I couldn't really tell a big difference in the responsiveness just because two and three felt really good. They felt natural and they felt snappy. The on-screen display, I don't love it. I really just don't love the controls for it. The on-screen display looks good, but they got the buttons on the back and they're kind of hard to reach and they're a little bit recessed and I don't really fully understand why they would do something like that. I mean, they work, they get the job done, and the on-screen display, like I said, looks nice just don't like the buttons. All things considered, is this monitor something that I would recommend? Yes. This is one of the nicest monitors that I have used all year, and I'm really glad that I was able to get to try it out, just because this thing has almost everything that you could want. Do I wish it was IPS? Yes. Is that realistic to think that IPS is possible and achieve all these specs right now at this point in time no in the near future like within the next couple years it probably will be at the rate the technology is moving and even though it's not ips it was still really nice to be able to try out hdr and local dimming on such a fast monitor with high resolution and that i kid you not it's a totally different gaming experience it's something else and in combination with being at the perfect size of 27 inches for 650 dollars even I still think it's worth it. If you're in the market for a brand new monitor and you want something that's gonna be a little bit future-proof and especially with next year, Nvidia, they got their 3000 series graphics cards coming out and I'm pretty sure they're gonna be able to push these higher resolutions at much higher frame rates. And the next closest monitor that has the exact same specs as this one is the Lenovo version of this monitor. It's about three to $400 more because I've seen this one as low as about maybe 550-ish dollars and that Lenovo one, I've seen it as low as about $900. So that that is a healthy chunk more money, almost double. And I don't know if that one's worth it. Maybe we'll try it out, see what we think. But I don't know, man, because that is a lot of money to spend on a monitor with such similar specs. And the Lenovo monitor, even at about $900, is also TN. So it's not like for the extra, you know, three or $400, it, you're going up to IPS. No, it's still a TN monitor. So your color profile is probably going to be pretty similar. I won't speak on it too hard because I haven't tried it yet. I feel like this one is actually a really good deal because it's only probably a couple hundred dollars more 
than another really good 1080p 240 hertz monitor. So like I said, if you've got a really high end PC that you're building right now, or you plan to build one in the future, I think this would be a good buy. Let's go into why I think 240 hertz at 1440p resolution is a good idea right now. Why would you want a high refresh rate monitor? Obviously for competitive titles like Overwatch or Fortnite or CSGO, something like that. Something that's lightweight, that's really easy to push high frame rates because obviously AAA games, you don't push really high frame rates in AAA games. Like maybe 150, 180 tops in most AAA games. But that's where the adaptive sync technology comes in, like FreeSync and G-Sync, because when you're playing games at really high resolution and really high settings, obviously it's gonna tank your FPS and you're not gonna be hitting that 240 hertz cap. But obviously you got features like HDR and local dimming and adaptive sync to make your experience not only better, but also extremely smooth. So even if you're playing a game that's 60 FPS, well, you got the adaptive sync, whether it's G-Sync or FreeSync 2 or whatever, to make your experience a lot smoother and still give you a pleasant time while gaming and give you the best color and contrast reproduction. And I got three reasons why you would wanna buy one of these monitors right now. One, obviously you wanna future-proof yourself a little bit. Give yourself some headroom, give yourself some resolution headroom because you can always turn your settings down, but if you buy a monitor that's not really that powerful and you're capping out already at the first you know, hardware purchase that you make of your PC and you know that you plan to upgrade in the future, well, you're not really doing yourself any favors because you're gonna have to turn around and either try to sell your monitor or add another monitor. At some point, you're gonna buy another one and probably in the very near future. Number two, you wanna game as smoothly as possible. We gotta keep in mind, there's a lot of frames between 144 and 240. There's nearly 100 frames. So don't miss out on all of that performance. Even if you're gaming at 160 hertz, well, I just wanna let you know, gaming at 160 hertz versus 144 hertz, is a big difference. Like you can tell the difference in smoothness between like 144 and 180. It's pretty crazy. And you wouldn't believe me until you tried it, but after you try it and you try to go back, you're like, mm, this doesn't feel as smooth as what I'm used to. And number three, obviously better visuals most of the time. So Windows looks the best at 27 inches and 1440p resolution. If you move up to 4K, things start to look a little bit too small. You gotta really mess with the scaling and you know how Windows is with scaling, it's not very good. But at 1440p, you can leave it at 100% scale and you will be perfectly fine. But 1080p at 27 inches, it just looks kind of weird. And I even said that in my Alienware review, it's only 1080p, I wish it was 1440, but uh, it's not. And this one is, and this one looks better. Even though that one's IPS, has better color accuracy, has better color reproduction, if I had to pick one monitor as my main and I have a budget of around $600, I would pick this one. Now, if my budget is significantly less, like three or $400, yeah, I will go with the Alienware because for the money, it's the best that you probably could get. But if my budget is a little bit higher, I'm really heavily gonna consider this one. All in all, my final thoughts, 1440p, 240 hertz is worth it. I can't wait for more monitors of this caliper and introducing even more technologies, higher peak brightness, better HDR. I'm just really excited for what the future is gonna bring in terms of uh, new monitor technology in 2020. And HP did a really good job at ending off 2019 with such a really good product. But all right guys, that is gonna be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you guys are new. I will have this monitor linked in the description below. I will also link the Alienware monitor if this monitor is a little bit you know, outside your budget because it is a little bit more on the expensive side. So you'll still have a really good 240 hertz option. If you guys have any further questions about this monitor, feel free to join the Discord. Obviously, we like to chat, talk about games, answer further questions about products. We got a giveaway going on right now, so you probably wanna join in that. And yeah, we'll have a good time. But yeah, guys, thanks once again for coming through and watching today's video. Drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new, turn on post notifications, and leave me a comment of what you think about new monitor technology coming out next year. What do you think the next big thing is gonna be? Like 4K, dare I say it, 240 hertz maybe? I doubt it. That's, I think that's a ways off. We're dreaming at that point. Maybe, maybe like three or four more years, we might see one of those. And I'ma review it, as long as it's not like five grand. But yeah, we're done dreaming. All right fam, I'll catch you guys in the next video.